guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Lindsay Butzer, a small animal veterinarian practicing here in Florida. And today we're gonna talk about mega esophagus in dogs. So you probably landed on this video because your dog was just diagnosed with it or your friend's dog was. If you guys are looking just for the treatment of mega esophagus, use the chapter markers below and it'll take you right to that section. All right, let's get into this. A dog with mega esophagus may present to the veterinarian with a wet cough and episodes of vomiting. They also may be weak, they may have weight loss, and they're also regurgitating their food. So an owner will explain that the dog simply can't keep their food down. They've been feeding them and the food just keeps coming back up. Your dog may also have had a chronically runny nose, which is from them regurgitating food that you might not have known. They also can have a fever and develop pneumonia, and that's because they're aspirating that vomit that keeps coming up from their esophagus not working. So for the vet students and people watching this video with a medical background, we need to review the difference between vomiting and regurgitation. So vomiting is an active process. It has a prodromal phase of lower abdominal effort and may have yellow bile in it from deep down into the stomach. Regurgitation is a passive process with little to no abdominal effort and mostly just food and white foam comes back up after they eat. So the esophagus is a muscular tube that connects the throat or pharynx to the stomach. There's a sphincter at the beginning of the esophagus that remains closed until it receives a signal from the swallowing nerves to open and the muscles following the food will automatically dilate to open so food can pass down into the stomach. So what is megaesophagus? Megaesophagus is when there's a dilation in the esophagus which can be focal or diffuse where the esophagus isn't constricting properly and it's dilated so food cannot get pushed down into the stomach and it comes right back up. So there are two reasons dogs get megaesophagus. The first one is congenital, which I rarely see. This happens at birth. And then another one is acquired, which they can get later on in life. And this is the most common one that I see practicing as a veterinarian. Some other reasons why a dog can get mega esophagus includes a foreign body or something that gets stuck in their throat that puts pressure on those nerves and damages the esophagus nerves. Other reasons are tumors like cancer of the throat or polyps that can develop. And the most common reasons are central nervous system or brain diseases that are affecting the nerves controlling the throat. These include myasthenia gravis, which is commonly seen in German shepherds, and it's a neurological disease that causes megaesophagus in dogs. Another one is autoimmune diseases, where the body literally attacks the esophagus tissue, and we don't know why it does this. Hormonal diseases such as Addison's disease can also cause megaesophagus, and less common, botulism toxicity, lead toxicity, organophosphate toxins, which can be found in some flea collars. To figure it out can be quite expensive because you're gonna have to run a lot of tests on these dogs to find out why they have megaesophagus. So how is your veterinarian gonna diagnose megaesophagus? Well, it's tricky. The first thing is an x-ray. So we have to look at their chest and examine the esophagus to see if it looks severely dilated. And on that x-ray, you may also see that the trachea is displaced ventrally because the esophagus is pushing it down. In the x-ray, you will also see signs of pneumonia developing because a lot of these dogs are aspirating that fluid that's getting regurgitated up, causing them to get pneumonia. The next step is doing a contrast esophagram and video fluoroscopy or barium swallow study to see abnormal pooling of barium in the throat. This can be dangerous if they aspirate the barium. So another compound called iohexol may be used if perforation is suspected, like if they swallowed a stick and you're worried that the esophagus has a hole in it. Next, your veterinarian will search for other reasons. They can do blood testing to look for other diseases that cause the esophagus to malfunction, such as Addison's disease or myasthenia gravis, etc. This will help with the treatment. 
And when no actual diagnosis can be identified, the diagnosis is acquired with an unknown cause. Seriously, that's basically what we call it. And that might be from age, the nerves in the throat could be degenerating in these older dogs, or they can acquire it from an autoimmune issue. So this is the typical case of megasophagus that I see, is we really find no diagnosis for it. So finally, you've been waiting for this part of this video, the treatment for megaesophagus. And I've been waiting to tell you. So the main thing is we're dealing with pneumonia and we're dealing with a dog who keeps regurgitating. So that is what our treatment is gonna be around, is controlling pneumonia and controlling regurgitation. To treat their pneumonia, I always recommend culturing their mucus first to see what antibiotics to use. I then like to initially hospitalize these patients and monitor how much they're regurgitating because they're gonna have fluid loss. So another thing is, I put them on IV fluids to help support them in these initial phases when these dogs come in very weak because they're vomiting and they're regurgitating all of their water and everything that they're trying to keep down. So that brings me to how we're gonna be feeding these dogs. Part of some treatments for megaesophagus is using prednisone or steroids if the dog is diagnosed with myasthenia gravis or Addison's disease. But you really need to use steroids with caution because these dogs are battling pneumonia. And as we know, steroids lower the immune system and can make their pneumonia worse. So that is really a difficult thing when trying to use steroids to treat their megaesophagus. So the most important thing is getting weight on them with special feeding techniques and keeping them hydrated. So these dogs with megaesophagus need to eat in an upright position, 45 degree or a 90 degree angle. That is to keep the food going down their esophagus into their stomach. So a lot of people use something called the Bailey chair. So you'll find tons of videos on YouTube of dogs running and jumping into their Bailey chair and getting ready to eat. And they're so excited. I saw a couple of videos of a lab, um, a German Shepherd, and then the owner is bringing them the food. So what do people do is they're gonna make liquid slurries or a gruel for their dogs. So you'll see videos on YouTube of them having a blender, putting in uh, water, a can of wet dog food, maybe some chicken or some meat to get protein in them. And then they go and hold the, the bowl of that dog food slurry for them and the dog laps it all up. And then they have to sit up in their chair for 10 to 15 minutes. And that is a really important thing because the food needs to go down into their stomach if you put them back down on all fours, they're gonna just regurgitate. So it's really important to take your time. So keeping these dogs alive is a project. Um, it's a lot of work and owners have to have a lot of patience with dogs with megaesophagus. So I just explained to you about the feeding, but before I made this video today, I actually called my dad, who's been a veterinarian for 40 years, and told him I'm making a video on megaesophagus today. And the first thing he says, like, oh, this is a bad disease. And I know that too, so we're gonna get into the prognosis and how long dogs live. But he did say some dogs can live up to a year with this disease. But sadly, most of them only live about 90 days was the mean survival time. But we chatted about it, um, and he said if they really stick to these feeding regimens, they keep the dogs upright, um, they feed them a gruel, maybe some of them even give them sub-Q fluids, um, fluids under the skin at home, which you can buy a bag from your veterinarian to keep your dog hydrated. This can keep them going longer. And then also preventing pneumonia, um, maybe even putting them on vitamins like vitamin C or turmeric, boosting their immune system because the main thing we're bad is pneumonia and that is why these dogs only make it 90 days they get antibiotic resistance and their chest is full of pus and pneumonia from regurgitating so that's what really ends up uh, killing these dogs is they can't keep food down they're getting weight loss they have chronic pneumonia and at a certain point owners are just like this isn't a quality of life for the dog and that might be something you're battling right now and that's why you're on this video but my dad dr butzer said some people keep them going for a year and it all depends on what type of mega esophagus your dog has what if they have a focal one and it's not the entire esophagus those dogs aren't gonna regurgitate as much. So you have to keep that in mind that your dog might live longer um, than expected. 
So to give you pet owners some more advice, um, I like to give them famotidine, which is an antacid to help with their stomach, and also GI prokinetics, such as ranitidine, which helps GI motility to move things down, helps with digestion. And then another one is sildenafil or Viagra, and this relaxes smooth muscle to help the esophagus dilate and food stay down into the stomach. So there, those are just a couple other things you guys could do. But sadly, this is a really bad disease. The prognosis is super poor, um, but I made this video to help educate pet owners, uh, veterinary students who are learning about this disease, and it's a common one, so I wanted to come on YouTube and talk about it. I hope you learned a lot in this video about mega esophagus. And if you guys have had a dog with this, please comment below what your routine was feeding them to keep them hydrated, um, the pneumonia treatments, and if your dog made it over 90 days, which is the recorded mean survival time of a dog with mega esophagus. There are a lot of pet owners that watch my videos, and if you guys could comment below your experience, that really helps them. All right, subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.